next time walk away because of some of its life.
gentlemen, my name is Sherry Wei and I'm the general manager of Ingenious Europe. Welcome to our uh, Visualizer Network Cloud Launch event and Partner Summit. It is our great pleasure today to introduce to you our latest technology and our upcoming cloud solution. On top of that, to celebrate our 20 years anniversary together with you. Years ago, when Wi-Fi was introduced to the market, Ingenious was one of the very first brands that were able to provide Wi-Fi devices. We were very well known for our reliable and robust uh, products. However, with the uh, popularity of uh, mobile devices and also the increasing demand of Wi-Fi connection, we understand that just providing hardware is not sufficient. This is why in 2015, we launched our end-to-end -end managed solution. This software-defined solution enables the users to plan, deploy, and manage the network at their fingertips using the easiest way to configure and define the Wi-Fi the way they want. This year, in the 20 years of our uh, Ingenious brand, we are very proud to announce to you that Ingenious has made one step <coughs> ahead, another step further to be the very first brand to launch the latest 11X technology and the serverless AI-driven cloud solution. So in today's presentation, we will present to you the advantages and also the benefits of these latest technology and solution. Before we move to the presentation, I would like to express our appreciation to our special speaker, Mr. Simon Brand from our strategic partner, Qualcomm. Thank you, Simon, for coming all the way to support us and to share with us the knowledge of uh, 11AX. Also, thanks to our technology partners who are here today, including OSCOM, cloud for y NDN, HRT, and RStore. Thank you for choosing Ingenious to be your Wi-Fi partner. Lastly, and most importantly, I would like to thank all of you to be here today, and your support throughout the years is our key to success. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy it today. Thank you. So, welcome in Italy for no Italian partner, e beh, grazie a tutti invece gli altri gli italiani per essere venuti. Questo è il nostro primo evento europeo di Ingenius. Vi ringrazio di essere venuti, perché appunto è grazie a voi che siamo qua. Il fatto che siamo in Italia non è un caso, è nuovamente la prima country per fatturato, e questo devo dire grazie a voi. Allora, oggi finalmente, dopo tanto tempo, presenteremo la piattaforma cloud che tutti noi aspettavamo da tempo e in più, appunto, come diceva prima Sherry, il lancio per la piattaforma Wi-Fi 6 o 11AX. E niente, cosa dire? Ci sarà adesso la presentazione da parte di Qualcomm, che tutti voi conoscete come leader mondiale per quanto riguarda la parte di semiconduttori, e successivamente ci sarà un coffee break in cui vi invito appunto di fermarvi nella sala demo qua a fianco in cui sia noi che i nostri partner tecnologici vi mostreremo appunto le ultime tecnologie relative a applicazioni e poi come ultima cosa appunto se eh, avete domande o quant'altro ci sarà anche durante il pranzo io adesso poi passo il microfono ad Amanda che farà l'introduzione appunto alla parte di Qualcomm per qualsiasi cosa sia io che Alessandro siamo disponibili di là e vabbè, prima di partire comunque ringrazio i nostri partner che hanno premesso di essere qua, vi dico in ordine alfabetico, quindi Ascom, Cloud4Y, Endian e HRT e anche Arrestore che ci ha fornito del materiale per organizzare l'evento. Grazie a tutti e buon inizio dell'evento. Grazie. So first up today I want to welcome up Mr. Simon Brand, uh, the Senior Product Director um, for with Qualcomm, and he'll be reviewing the advantages and the benefits of 11AX technology. Okay, hi, welcome. My name is uh, Simon Brandt, and uh, I was, I'm going to, uh, to show a few slides to introduce the 11AX technology and, and how it benefits the, uh, the use case. So I want to start with this, uh, this first slide uh, that shows, um, let's say, the use cases for which 11AX has been developed. 
So when the standard was, uh, was made, um, the, the goal was to reach a factor of four higher throughput and very dense environment. Um, so, so let's run through a few of those dense environments. For example, uh, in, in high-rise uh, apartment buildings, imagine that you have uh, access points installed by, by the carriers very close together, and these, uh, these access points operate at a certain, uh, a certain band, a certain frequency. Uh, these cannot be controlled, and you know, different access points may operate at, at, at the same frequency, and there will be collisions happening. And I walked through some of the, uh, the technologies how that uh, that can help 11x can help improve the, the collision uh, management. Um, another um, use case is the is the enterprise and, and large venues uh, use case where uh, imagine you have uh, many uh, many many clients many stations connected to a single access point. Uh, in the past, we had maybe 20, 30 access points. These, uh, sorry, AP uh, stations connected to access points. But these days, um, maybe 100, maybe 200, maybe 500 stations will be connected to a single access point. Uh, so uh, there are technologies developed like old EMA and multi-user MIMO uh, that, that will manage the traffic flows for these high number of stations connected to a single access point. Uh, really well, and uh, I'll go through some of these, uh, these these technologies as well in this presentation. Um, 11x is also improved for home use. Uh, for example, in home use or maybe hotspot use, uh, imagine that um, uh, you want to increase the, the range, a single access point going as far as possible. There are technologies in 11x that, that help increase the, the, the range, the, the coverage in, in home as well. Another use case is, for example, in, in universities. Uh, imagine uh, an access point uh, that is installed in, uh, in a classroom where all the students have to uh, uh, kind of connect to the access point, uh, have to, to make uh, you know, a certain test, and, and the connection to all those different users have to be equal. We need to be equal opportunity to all the, all the students that are connecting to the, to the access point. So there are certain mechanisms built in the um, Build in 11x technology so that uh, the, the, the quality of service, the, uh, say the, the, the guarantee of packets distributed over the, over the stations is, is, is um, uh, kind of, it, 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 it's manageable. It, it's not based on, uh, on, on random processes. It is, uh, it is very much deterministic. Okay, so let's, uh, let's move to the, uh, to the next uh, slide. Okay, so, so this slide gives you an impression of, uh, of, of the, the vision of the, uh, you know, the very dense environments. Uh, so in, uh, in, in apartment buildings, uh, imagine the, the big dots representing the, the access points. There are many of those access points in a very dense environment, uh, so, so they have to be managed, uh, managed well. Uh, each of those access points is connecting to uh, not, only, not only phones, not only tablets, uh, but, but laptops, IoT devices, uh, there is an, a special uh, kind of feature built in 11x that <coughs> make uh, battery-operated devices, IoT devices, that work at really low power. Um, we call that uh, target wait time. I, I'll explain that later. So all these uh, all these, these features are are available in, in 11x. So um, at a high level, um, 11x, Wi-Fi 6, um, also referred to in the Wi-Fi lines. Uh, will, will give you the fact of four higher uh, throughput capacity. Uh, it will increase the, the efficiency. There are technologies on, on symbol length that I will explain uh, to get uh, much better efficiency of the, uh, uh, let's say of the data throughput. And we talked about uh, uh, improved uh, coverage as well. So, this slide shows the uh, the eight technology options that are uh, available in the 11 x that, uh, that help improve the use cases that uh, I explained. Uh, so the first uh, technology is uh, multi-user MIMO. Um, 11 AC today, or 11 M today, is based on, on MIMO. So that means that uh, you have multiple antennas on the AP, you have multiple antennas on the, sta on the station, 
and those multiple antennas carry traffic, um, and the aggregate, the more antennas, the, the, the more, uh, let's say, the more capacity can be transferred from the AP to the, uh, to the, to the station. Uh, with multi-use of MIMO, um, a, a new feature is introduced. Um, by increasing more antennas on the, on the access point, there is more capacity available uh, at, the, uh, at the AP to, to wirelessly distribute into the, uh, let's say, into the, uh, uh, to, to the stations. Uh, but stations do not have a lot of antennas. They have only <coughs> one antenna. So what, what multi-user MAMO is doing, uh, it, will, um, it will virtually group uh, several stations, several mobile phones <coughs> or, or tablets or laptops together. Uh, let's, let's assume that each station has one antenna. Uh, so if you, you group as multi-user MAMO those four stations uh, in one, you send them a trigger. Uh, so they act like a 4x4 uh, uh, virtual station, and with the four antennas on the AP, you're able to have the full capacity, uh, even if the, uh, the stations have only one or two antennas. So multi-user MIMO is increasing the, uh, the, the capacity, even to, to uh, antennas, uh, the station has with fewer antennas. Another technology that is, um, that is introduced is, is OFDMA. Uh, so OFDMA is, an, is a technology where uh, the spectrum, that is typically 80 megahertz wide, uh, is split into smaller chunks of, of 2 megahertz. We call that research units, and, and small packets will be allocated to those small research units uh, and distributed through the, uh, let's say, to, to multiple stations at the same time. I'll explain in a few slides how that, uh, how that works. So, uh, in summary, all of the MA will help improve small packet uh, communication, and multi-user MIMO will help uh, large packet <coughs> communication uh, to, the, to the stations. Another technology that is introduced is um, uplink resource scheduling. Uh, today, the way Wi-Fi works is uh, you have uh, an access point that transmits information to the stations in the downlink direction. And stations that need to uh, transmit information in the uplink direction, uh, they, they have to, to grab the, uh, you know, the time slot through the through a contention mechanism CCA, and that uh, there will be contention, there will be back off, and there will be retries, and, and that gives inefficiency, especially if you have uh, 100 or 200 stations all trying to, to connect to the uh, to the AP. Uh, so what uh, what 11ex is introducing is that, uh, that the stations are quiet and they'll wait for a trigger to be sent by the, by the access point and only then the, uh, the communication will happen in the, in the uplink. So that means that um, both the downlink and the uplink uh, data communication is managed and in, in that way the, um, the, uh, let's say the collisions are far less and, and the quality of service is improved quite a bit. Uh, you can imagine if you have a latency sensitive application, for example, uh, enterprise voice, um, if you have a voice over IP phone, if packets, voice packets have to be guaranteed in both downlink and uplink, um, this, this scheduling <coughs> mechanism will, will help improve the, uh, that use case. So imagine if you have an office space with uh, maybe 10, 20, 100 voice over IP phones, uh, 11X will, will guarantee the uh, the quality of the voice much better than uh, the, the legacy technologies like 11M, 11AC. Another technology uh, feature that is introduced is the, is the long symbol. Uh, in 11AC, imagine that the, uh, the, the, the payload, so imagine the time axis uh, over here. Uh, the payload is in the, the light gray box of, of, of AC, and then the, uh, the the, the blue uh, area is, is so-called guard band. There is no information transmitted in there. So if you concatenate uh, these packets, um, there is inefficiency every time there is a blue bar and then data is communicated and that, that continues like that case. In 11 ex uh, the redundancy part is, uh, is pretty small and all this, this time can be used for data communication. So that gives uh, better efficiency so the, uh, the time is better used uh, with the introduction, introduction of, the, of the long multi-may symbol. 
Another technology that is introduced is uh, 1024 QAM. Uh, so this is the, the modulation technique. Uh, 11 uh, AC today is only um, modulating up to 256 QAM. That gives 8 bits per second per hertz. Uh, with 1024 QAM, you go to 10 bits per second per hertz. That gives you a 25% uh, throughput improvement. Uh, that throughput improvement is typically uh, possible if, uh, let's say, at short distance. So if you are within, let's say, 10 meter uh, from the access point, you will be able to take benefit of the, of the higher order modulation. Uh, so typically in room, you can expect an, a 25% uh, higher throughput <coughs> rate because of the introduction of 1024 QAM. Another feature, as I already explained to you, in the in the hotspot case, in the home case, you want to really increase your uh, your, your, your your range, your coverage. Uh, there is an, uh, a feature that's called extended range that uh, is increasing the preamble and is uh, is duplicating some of the data uh, to get an, a 3 dB uh, extension of the uh, of, of the coverage. I expect this feature to be uh, to be very well uh, used in in home and in, in hotspot environments. 11ax is also um, uh, is is is, uh, is defined in both 2.4 and, and 5 and the future 6 gigahertz band. 11ac uh, is, 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 is a technology that's only defined for 5 gigahertz. Uh, it is proprietary deployed in uh, 2.4 gigahertz as well, uh, but interoperability is not always uh, guaranteed. Uh, with the introduction of 11ax. Um, the 11 x technology, all those, those 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 technology enhancements will be will be tested by the Wi-Fi Alliance in in both bands, uh, so that we now guarantee uh, high performance, uh, high quality IoT uh, for for all the bands. There is also a feature called uh, BSS Color. I explain it in another slide. Uh, so in effect, what BSS Color does, uh, imagine. Um, you want to communicate to an access point um, uh, that is here on the left, and there is a neighbor access point that is kind of disturbing uh, or kind of trying to, to, to get uh, the same time slots. Uh, with a coloring scheme, uh, the communication is, 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 uh, it is clear whether the station communicates to either this AP or that AP, and, and that coloring aspect uh, also helps improve the, uh, the efficiency uh, in very dense environments. Okay, so this is the, the high-level overview of the 11EX technology uh, introduction. Um, I spoke already about uh, OFDMA and multi-user MIMO. In, in this slide, I indicate in, an, uh, kind of in, an, uh, in a simplified form uh, what will be uh, the benefit for the different use cases. So uh, let's start with OFDMA. So uh, if an access point, in this example, needs to communicate to stations um, that are doing small packet communication. So think about, uh, we talked about voice, uh, we talked about gaming, uh, so maybe some, some product services. The introduction of the product today with, with Ingenious uh, is that uh, there, is a, there is a cloud component, so there is a lot of uh, control messages going to, uh, let's say, to the, uh, let's say to, the, to the cloud server. Uh, so small messages. Um, will be will be communicated um, in, in in the following form. Imagine this uh, this truck to represent uh, an 80 megahertz signal. Uh, so uh, assume an 80 megahertz packet to go from the AP to the station. Uh, if this is 80 megahertz, um, what OFDMA is doing, it, it chops the spectrum up in, in small chunks of, of two megahertz. Uh, these, these, these small chunks of 2 megahertz can be extended <coughs> to say 10 megahertz, another 50 megahertz, and all the way up to, uh, to 80 megahertz to fill it completely. And in one packet transmission, uh, this, this information will go to, let's say, uh, this, this laptop. Uh, this information will go to a cloud server, and, and, and maybe this, this part of the information is going to um, an IoT device, maybe a light bulb or a voice, to, a voice over IP device. And so. So every time a truck goes to the other side, the PPDU, a packet is transmitted in, in 11EX, 
this is every two milliseconds. There is a, a, a packet going from the AUP to the uh, to the station, um, and in one transmission, all this information goes at once. While in uh, in 11 AC or 11 N, um, imagine that every time a packet is being transmitted, it has to go to one user. Uh, so, if for example the packet uh, load is small, then this will be will, will be empty, and there will be a lot of inefficiency. So, by able to be able, by introducing all of the MA and having the um, uh, the small packets all grouped together, uh, there is much more efficient communication for small packets in. Uh, in, in these use cases. In multi-user MIMO, what happens is there is, imagine that you have a lot of data that has to be communicated from the access point to the, uh, to the, to the stations. Uh, and it, uh, imagine this, the full 80 megahertz bandwidth. There is so much data available in the, in the access point that uh, it can completely fill the truckload and transmit this, transmit this at once. So imagine if there is one antenna on each device, then one truck represents the, the data that will go to one antenna. If there is another device with one antenna, then if you have, for example, a four antenna access point, uh, then one antenna will carry the data of one truck load, <coughs> and then the next antenna will contain uh, the data of the, of the next uh, truck load, and will uh, send it all at once uh, to the, uh, to the <coughs> station. So in that way, you increase the capacity uh, of the access point by multiplexing all those those large chunks of data uh, to the uh, to the stations. So multi-user MIMO is increasing the capacity uh, because you stack all those 80 megahertz uh, spatial streams on top. Uh, the user will get its its max throughput. Uh, so ideal for high bandwidth applications, cloud uploads. Um, Video streaming, a, a lot of high uh, high capacity data will be will be mapped onto multi-user MIMO, while the the small packet, as I explained, voice and, 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 and control map messages will be uh, will be mapped into all of the MA. So two two major uh, technology improvements uh, is the introduction of 11 years. So I, I made this slide to uh, to kind of uh, illustrate how the uh, how the long symbol will uh, will, will help. So I start by, by explaining that uh, in in the old 11B technology, um, a single carrier system. So imagine you are in in a room, and in that room there are a lot of uh, echoes happening. Maybe the walls is painted. There's not many curtains. Uh, so if you speak uh, from A to B. Um, you speak a certain language, a certain sentence. But that sentence will be reflecting to the walls, to the windows, to the floors, and arrive a little later um, with, with, you know, as, as an echo. So um, that means that if you try to, to listen to the, the sum of these signals, so the, 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 the line of sight signal and then the echo signals, uh, at some point uh, you, you get the, the signal <coughs> delayed, and that gives garbage. If, if, you, if you, you don't do the right things, it is difficult to to decode the communication uh, while echo is happening. So imagine that if you speak slower uh, and you pause with every word, um, you say it is easier if you pause. Right? So every time you have a waiting time when you, s you speak to the other side, um, it is easier to decode each word. It is easier. And um, the drawback, of course, is that the, the, the data communication happens when there is a word transmitted. Uh, but that the waiting time, the guard band, is when there is, it's kind of wasted, and right? it's only there to make sure that uh, the echoes can be, uh, let's say, can be handled uh, properly. But this is the technology of the end uh, that, is, uh, that is used uh, since uh, the introduction of 11A, so it's very old technology. But what uh, 11AX is doing, uh, it is increasing the, the efficiency uh, based, based on this technology. So in 11AC, there is a so-called uh, short symbol. So imagine every time a word is transmitted, every time a packet is transmitted, uh, the symbol duration is uh, 3.2 microseconds. That's fixed, defined by the standard. Uh, so then the waiting time in between the words is to make sure that the echoes can settle down and the delay spread is, is resolved. Uh, so we call that the guard band. So the guard band refers to the, to the empty spaces. There are two different guard bands in 11AC. You can do that with an 0.4 or 0.8. Um, 
so that creates an efficiency of either 89 or 80 percent, dependent on what guard band uh, you choose. You mentioned that the, the 0.8 microsecond guard band, uh, so the, kind of the, the, the longest possible in the standard, is typically chosen in, in outdoor environments where echoes come uh, from a, a long distance. Imagine you have buildings with these glass windows and, and for outdoor hotspot, you have those echoes coming all the way from the window back, so you need, you need longer uh, <coughs> spread. Uh, it's all reduce your efficiency, but at least you're able to properly decode the uh, signal. Now, what 11x is introducing, uh, they're introducing the symbol duration, which is four times as long, so 12.8 microseconds from 3.2. Um, so if you have a very long word, and then you have the same uh, kind of waiting time, uh, the standard allows this to be either 0.8, uh, 1.6, or 3.2 microseconds. Uh, so if you pick the, the 3.2, you have this 80% of the time you can actually transmit data. The other uh, is, is kind of uh, redundant uh, for, the, for the echo handling. Um, but the smallest one is 0.8. That gives 94% uh, of the air time will actually be used for, for data communication. So you can see that there is about a 5% improvement uh, for efficiency simply because of this feature. <coughs> and, and that will, um, that will help me. The efficiency is one of the elements that, that contribute to a factor four higher throughput. Um, so then, why is there multi-user? You, you can imagine that uh, if you go back to the um, uh, to the system where we we, we have now an 11 x system with a 12.8 microsecond symbol duration and this this guard band. Uh, if you do small packets, if you have voice packets for uh, let's say voice over IP, you have TCP/IP packets. Uh, then you cannot fill the whole symbol. It's, it's just a, a small payload and a very long symbol. Um, so what uh, what what all of the MA is doing? It, um, it it as I explained to you earlier, just the, the truck. You remember the small truck where we had all the all the small parts of the uh, the truck filled in with different data. We, we combine the data of multiple users uh, and we we transmit that with that long symbol and the uh, the, the small guard band. This will give uh, we have in fact let's say two benefits, you still have the long symbol to get 94% uh, efficiency, and you have the ability to fill <coughs> the symbol completely with all the small packets to be able to, um, to, uh, to, to have every bit of the airtime uh, properly used, and there's no wasted time, no wasted capacity, all contributing to, uh, to higher efficiency. So in this slide, I uh, explain the same thing again, one more time. Um, so in, in a typical uh, use case, um, so for example, if you have a, a two by two uh, access point, and you have a, uh, a two by two mobile phone, it's a station device. Uh, by the way, what we see is that in 11EX, uh, devices are typically two on 10. Uh, in 11 ec you, you saw a lot of one on 10 devices, Today we, uh, we expect uh, that uh, typical laptops uh, that are 11x compliant uh, and phones will have have two antenna reception. So, so what happens is that um, uh, this is the, the 80 megahertz uh, bandwidth I, I talked about as an example. Uh, if you have small packet communication, for example, to this phone, um, the 80 megahertz so the, the subsection of the 80 megahertz is allocated uh, with data for uh, that will go to this this gray phone. Uh, another part of the spectrum will be uh, filled with data that will go to another phone and then uh, there's many more. And then um, when the packet transmission actually happened, the, 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 let's say all these small packets will go at once to the, uh, to the, uh, to the other side. So more efficient for small packets. I explained already the, the truck where we, um, uh, so for example, if you have an, an eight antenna access point, you have the, the most benefit from, from multi-user MIMO. Uh, so uh, this gray phone now needs a, a lot of data, so the whole 80 megahertz uh, and the two antennas out of the eight antennas will carry data for this gray phone and other two antennas will carry data for the green phone and so on. And it can be stacked up to the, uh, the number of antennas that are on the, uh, on the AP. So if, for example, you have an, a two by two uh, access point, you can stack up to, uh, to two spatial streams if you have a four antenna access point, you're able to stack up to four spatial streams, so you double the capacity. 
And if you would have an eight, you can go all the way to, uh, let's say, weeks based mm -hmm. So that should be a consideration for your product uh, definition, product choice. So here I show some, um, some, some data throughput rates uh, for the different technologies. So, so what I uh, did over here, um, I show 4x4, four 4 four, 40 and 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, so in, uh, in 2.4 gigahertz, uh, the, the, the maximum communication is 40 megahertz wide. In, uh, in, 11, in 11 AC, uh, the, the certain throughput rate, the fire rate is, uh, is 867 megabits per second. Will be reached with the, the introduction of 1024 com, uh, the long symbol, and, and, and other items. Uh, the throughput rate goes up by, uh, by 39 percent. So the uh, let's say the, the typical throughput rate uh, for 11 ax uh, will be uh, 39 percent higher. And then if you go away from the AP in, in, in a rate versus range curve, uh, at, at the far end point where the data communication is, is kind of ending. Uh, you will be uh, seeing about the same uh, distance. I will explain later how we can extend that. Um, so if you want to communicate uh, at a certain speed, for example, this is 1.1 gigabit uh, fire rate, if you want to transmit at, let's say, 400 megabits per second um, to, to a user, you can see that because of the introduction of 11 ax uh, there is an, uh, a couple of dB uh, range improvement for that throughput rate. Uh, so what we explain over here is that with the introduction of 11 ax uh, the, the, the coverage is, uh, is improved in the home. You can expect higher throughput rates at a further distance uh, to the AP. If you, uh, you check the same thing in 80 megahertz, the, the max uh, fire rate is uh, 2.4 gigabit. Uh, so the, the UDP rate is typically about 80% uh, of that. Uh, for 11 AC, uh, the, the throughput rate, the fire rate is 71.7 gigabit. Uh, you also expect to see that 39% uh, uh, throughput improvement, uh, as well as the, uh, the, the home coverage improvement, so that user that receives maybe one gigabit over here is able to, uh, to receive that one gigabit throughput uh, a couple of dB, so a couple meter further from the, from the access point. And in, uh, in 8 by 8, uh, these numbers go up to uh, affect it to, to uh, almost uh, 5 gigabit. So I spoke about uh, the feature to, to increase uh, the, uh, the range. So the, the feature that is, uh, that is introduced in 11X is called uh, the extended range feature. So what it does, uh, so imagine uh, a communication happening between the access point 11AC in this example, uh, to an 11 AC client. So this is what we do today. <coughs> um, so if imagine the time axis over here, there is an, a preamble, and then uh, there is the payload here in red. And, and packets are sent in, in this form from the AP to the station. Uh, so in 11 X, there is a, a special feature introduced uh, that increases the, the, the power of the preamble 3 dB above the regulatory limit. But it is it is only during a very, very short time. So that means that the regulatory limit is still uh, com compliant to the regulatory limit. Um, so the, the preamble, because of the 3 dB higher uh, power, can be seen 3 dB further away. So you have that, 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 that far away point is extended uh, a little bit. Uh, but it's only for the preamble. And what, uh, what this extended range feature is doing uh, so imagine that uh, there is data communication mapped onto the, uh, let's say the, the carriers of the, of the symbol. Um, with 11AX, that information is duplicated. So let's say we have, uh, let's say, four bits of information. Those four bits of information is, is duplicated. So we, we kind of, we, we get another 3 dB improvement by, by duplicating the data. And uh, in the standard, this is called uh, preamble boost. And dual subcarrier modulation, so the fact that the data is um, is duplicated, so you give up half the bandwidth, but you can you can read uh, 3 dB further. Uh, another powerful feature that uh, that will help extend the range. So in in this example, I show um, one of the um, uh, one of the uh, the elements.
and so one of the, the, the use cases that can be uh, can be improved with, uh, with this O of DMA. So imagine that you have an, uh, a 30 dBm access point. That is the max regulatory power. Um, that, 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 that that power that is transmitted from the access point uh, will reach to a, further, a certain point. And if you have a, a station that also have a 30 dBm, so a one watt radio inside, it will be able to communicate uh, in the uplink uh, to make sure that uh, there is communication possible in both downlink and uh, uplink. Um, so the furthest away happens with the smallest bandwidth to have the highest uh, power spectrum density. So uh, you have a 20 megahertz signal uh, typically to 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 kind of to, to, to get to that, that, that far away point, to get the furthest uh, range in the uh, uh, in data communication. But now imagine that uh, in 11 ex you have, uh, let, let, let's take a mobile phone, a battery operated device. A battery operated device uh, does not have a 30 dBm radio that will drain the battery too much. It, it typically is 18 or 20 dBm. Um, so that means that if you would imagine top picture, that if you would have one phone that has an, an 18 dBm radio, uh, it will be able to hear the AP, but it will not be able to communicate back into the uplink, because it simply doesn't have the, uh, the, the enough power in, in, the, in the power amplifier to reach that point. So what uh, 11 ax uh, is introducing is that um, if you have, uh, let's say, multiple stations, let, let, let's take four in this example. So, so let's assume the power of the PAs the, is, is, is effective for less, so let's assume 24 dBm. So then what, uh, what uplink of the mate can do, it will, uh, it will concentrate the, uh, the, 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 kind of the, the transmission of this, this one phone um, in, in 5 megahertz, in one fourth of the bandwidth, which will give the, the same power spectrum density as if there would have been a 30 dBm radio. So if you then uh, group four of those in this example, uh, so five megahertz each, uh, you, those four phones, they fill the complete <coughs> five megahertz bandwidth, and they will transmit in the uplink as soon as the trigger is received from the AP. So the AP sends a trigger to those phones, and then all at the same time transmit in the uplink. And by, by playing this trick, uh, you're able to, uh, to have uh, the same reach. You, you can then still act like if you would be a 30 dBm uh, PA and, and, and have that same uh, home coverage in the, in the open. So, uh, very powerful feature in 11x. <coughs> Another feature is um, uh, this, the, the, the BSS column, the spatial reviews. Um, so, I already explained in the, in the use case slide at the beginning that uh, the map oh, too fast. I'll give you a peek of the other slides already. So, okay. <laughs> Um, so imagine that uh, data communication has to happen between this, uh, this, this station and this access point in the BSS. Um, so if there is an, a neighbor uh, AP operating <coughs> in, uh, in the similar frequency uh, band, um, the signal strength may be so high that this access point will be waiting until this, this access point is ready and then finally do the, the transmission to, the, uh, to, this, uh, to this device. Uh, that means that while this access point is waiting for this guy to be ready, there is a lot of un, kind of un, unused time. It, it is, it's a waste of time to, to kind of wait for the neighbor to be ready. So what um, what, what is introduced in 11 ax is if you have a packet, uh, there is the preamble, and then there is the payload. In the preamble, there will be a six-bit random code, and that uh, that six-bit random code uh, gives a, a call gives a signature to the uh, uh, to the AP. So that means that um, if, if these two devices are associated, uh, they end up in the same color. So they, they communicate uh, with packets that have a six-bit random code uh, determined by the AP and, and, and station that is unique for that uh, for this blue uh, blue access point. And the six-bit random code will be different for the for the yellow one. So. That means that, for example, uh, when a packet is, is transmitted by this, this access point to another device that I haven't shown, but let's assume there is a tra packet transmission happening, then the blue one can see from the 6-bit random code, oh, this packet is not 
for, for me. And then if the, the power level is, is low enough, it just decides to transmit over it. Uh, and that is a, a very powerful feature to in, increase the transmit opportunities, to increase the efficiency in in very dense uh, dense environment. So known as uh, spatial computing. Another uh, technology that is introduced uh, with 11X is a feature called uh, target wake time. Uh, so target wake time uh, is helping to uh, to reduce the power consumption of the uh, of the connected devices. So I try to explain this with uh, an access point communicating to the station. And in, in this example, I mentioned the timeline over here. The actual communication happens in these big yellow or orange uh, boxes. And in the meantime, when there is no data communication happening between AP and station, um, there is, there is a, a listen received, there is CCA, there is, there is, there is retries happening. So uh, both the AP and station will consume uh, power, will consume the battery, uh, kind of without any reason, because the actual data communication is happening here. This is only to, to manage the network, to figure out when the actual transmission is to happen. So what uh, what 11 x is introducing is uh, there is an, kind of an agreement between the, uh, the access point and the station. Uh, and the AP is telling the, the station, you are allowed to transmit in these time slots. Um, so there is this, so there is a clock running here, there is a clock running here, and they know from each other exactly when the communication has to happen. So that means that in the meantime, uh, this battery operated device, from the Wi-Fi perspective, can go to sleep because it knows that it, there is no communication uh, required. And then when the, the time arrives, uh, when communication has to happen, the, the Wi-Fi radio of the of the of this battery operated device wakes up transmits, and the AP will be ready at that moment in time to receive that packet, because there is this, this, this agreement between AP and station to, um, let's say, to, uh, to receive that packet, so there is, there is no, there's no contention, there is, there is no CCA mechanism happening, um, they will just uh, very effectively uh, communicate uh, with the, the lowest uh, possible battery uh, power consumption. So 11X will, will help reduce the uh, the power consumption of uh, battery operated devices. Uh, this is a feature that can be very, very helpful for IoT devices. So imagine if you have very, very tiny, um, uh, let's say battery operated, uh, let's say a, a smoke detector or, or something like this. Um, so th these batteries may have to operate for a year or five years. So by, by having this, uh, this, this TWT, you're, you're able to, maybe we can say every other day, Every hour, this device wakes up for a bit. Then it does its communication, and the and the AP is ready to receive that packet. And then this uh, this, this this tiny battery operated device is able to uh, to go back to sleep and, and use its battery for a very very long time. So I often get a question: So what happens if you have both 11AX and 11AC devices happening? Uh, let's say communicating at the same time. So I made this, uh, some people call me a complicated slide, so I'll try to explain. Uh, so, so let's first look to this box over here. Uh, so there is an uh, 11X access point communicating to uh, all kind of stations, 11X stations, 11N stations, 11AC stations, maybe 11 b stations. And uh, there is data flow happens from, let's say from the AP in the downward direction, and there is also communication happening in the, in the other direction. Uh, so the, uh, the access point has the ability to, uh, to look to all those flows and, and manage that, uh, that properly. So, um, so here I made an illustration of, um, let's say, of, of how the communication uh, happens. So let's first look to, uh, to legacy 11AC. So the standard allows, so, in, in, so th this packet, so I mentioned the timeline in this direction. So um, imagine a packet that goes into the air that lasts typically two milliseconds. Um, imagine that this device is a 160 megahertz device. It can also be 80 or 40, doesn't matter. It's uh, up to 160 in the standard. And let's assume the device has two antennas that I'm able to fill 
uh, let's say this, this box with this data, this, this packet, these bits for that one device. Uh, so all this, this, this colored uh, kind of information will go from one access point to this one station. So if there's a lot of data that has to be communicated, uh, 11 AC will do well. It will, will fill the packet, uh, it will transmit the data to this one device during two milliseconds. Um, if you do all of DNA, I explained that the, the 80 megahertz, so this is the, the width of the spectrum, is split into small resource units, two, mega, two megahertz each. So you can fill the principle with 240, the standard is doing it at 237. Uh, you, you, you fill up to 37 uh, small packets, and you fill it up uh, up to the number of antennas that that specific station has. So, for example, this uh, this, this red box over here it will is, is two streams high. So there is a two streams of information in this, uh, this small resource unit that will go to an 11x device. There may be another device at the same time that will receive um, another two spatial streams of data in two meters wide. Uh, if there is a one-way one, -by -one uh, device, um, that specific RU resource unit will be filled up with only one stream. It will be packed together. And during these two milliseconds, this information will be sent at once. So you can imagine if you have, for example, uh, voice packets that are very tiny, TCPIP, uh, TCPIP ACK packets <coughs> or control packets, they will all be grouped together as, as miscellaneous and sent at once. Well, in the past, you had to do a two millisecond or so, maybe a, a transmission with a lot of empty space. So, very effective way of communicating uh, small uh, small packets. So, if you do um, communication to 11x devices that, that require a lot of data, so this is the, the, the cloud-based um, uploads or, or, or video transmission. So, so what you do, uh, in this example, I assume that each of the 11x stations it has one antenna, so we fill up one antenna uh, for the complete two milliseconds. Complete 160 or 80 megahertz uh, device, and then uh, with the introduction of multi-user MIMO, we stack all those spatial streams on top to the maximum number of antennas on the AP. Um, in the product uh, that is introduced today, we stack up to four. Uh, in a 4x4, we stack up to two for a 2x2 two two device, and a lot of data, a lot of capacity is uh, is, is transmitted in that uh, that uh, video. Uh, 11 AC. Uh, has, has also multi-user mammal capabilities. Uh, it is able to stack it up to, uh, to uh, eight spatial stream according to the standard. The only difference is that you can distribute it only up to four users. While 11ex can, it is a finer granularity, it will distribute that, those eight spatial stream up to eight different users. So that's the main difference between 11ex and 11ec multi-user mammal. So then in this slide, I, uh, I kind of, at a use case, try to, uh, to indicate uh, how the access point is um, uh, uh, kind of choosing it, it, its modulation technique dependent on the type of flows that, uh, that have to be communicated. So for example, if, um, if, if modifications, not necessarily modifications have to happen, uh, these are typically small, then all of the MA uh, will be used, voice will be used uh, with all of the MA small packets gaming, browsing, uh, and then if you go to, to web-based services, then, then typically the multi-user MIMO will be chosen because we expect the data packet to be, uh, the, the data <coughs> content to be bigger, and then multi-user MIMO will better make use of the, uh, of the capacity. So this is just an illustration of, of how this is done. This is, this is not uh, you know, accurate in terms of you know, the actual size, but just want to give you an indication that, that this this, this choice will have to be made by the, uh, by the access point. Um, and Qualcomm is implementing uh, software in the scheduler to make sure that, uh, that the proper uh, modulation technique is chosen for the, for the, for the, the typical uh, flow or packet that has to transmit. Uh, so here I did some, uh, some illustration of what I expect to happen over time. Um, so, so what I did over here, I assumed, um, uh, let's, let's assume that uh, year one is uh, 2019, today. And we have only uh, legacy devices uh, connected today. 
So with language devices, we reach a certain speed, dependent on, uh, let's say, on the, on the access point. So when next year, 2020, the 11AX stations are going to be uh, in the market, um, in this case, I, I, I assume 13 devices, as an example, uh, to be communicated uh, by the by the AP. And then, for example, a year later, we still have those 13 um, legacy stations, and we have now four. And this is over here, four 11AX stations. Um, so the 11AX stations will be able to more effectively uh, communicate uh, <coughs> information with the introduction of OFDMA. Mm -hmm with the introduction of Nautilus and MIMO and, and all the other thousand and so 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 their the data communication is, uh, is happening. It will scale down the capacity of the legacy devices, but the aggregate capacity is going up. Let's say if this is uh, maybe a total of, of 600 megabit, then we go to maybe 800 megabit over here. So, so even, um, uh, yeah, if not the, the legacy devices will, will, will benefit as well. Because now it is a total of 17 devices that will be communicating data, um, and the 13 devices still have uh, a big chunk of the of the capacity. Uh, so then, over time, uh, let's say two, three, four years out, when there is more 11x devices, uh, the aggregate capacity. In this example, I have 26 connected devices. Uh, we're able to to get uh, you know, almost twice the speed. Um, and the amount of legacy devices is still there, uh, but, but everyone will experience uh, higher throughput. Um, so ideal 4x4 or 8x8, uh, a factor of 4 higher throughput can be achieved if we can stack all the way up to, uh, to 8 spatial streams. So this is the slide that um, <coughs> I've put in to, uh, to indicate what um, Qualcomm-based uh, uh, solution is, uh, say is, is offering. Uh, IPQ stands for Internet Processor Qualcomm. The 8074 series uh, is bringing the 11x technology uh, that is used in, uh, in the product for today. That is, is going to be introduced. Uh, so what uh, what what we have done? Um, so when I went through the, the technology presentation, uh, there is a lot of decisions to be made what type of modulation is best for what type of flow. Uh, we talk about small packets, we talk about big packets. Uh, so uh, we have decided to integrate the, the networking engine and the Wi-Fi radio in, in one piece of silicon, in one SOC. Uh, by having the, uh, the networking engine, so the Ethernet uh, networking part and the Wi-Fi part in, in one chip, we have the ability to, uh, to see the flows coming in from, from the Ethernet in, in the product that uh, Engini is introducing today. Uh, there is a cloud-based component where uh, all those flows, all those Ethernet packets come in. They will, be, uh, they will be stored in a buffer in the chip and then dependent on the, on the type of information that's in the buffer and dependent on the transmit opportunities that, uh, that, that occur at a certain moment in time, the scheduler will pick uh, the small packets all together transmits an OVM A packet, and then it will, in the next transmit opportunity, take the larger packets in a multi-user MIMO. So it has the ability to uh, to, uh, to really optimize the scheduler uh, for, uh, let's say, cloud-based uh, based services by having that, that all in one. So highly integrated SOC for uh, for optimal scheduling of, of all those technologies that, uh, that I explained. Um, of course, the, uh, the chip will, will reach higher speed. We talk about 1024 POM, we talk about the long symbol. All these elements will give uh, higher higher capacity, higher throughput. Capacity up to 54 higher, we talked about it quite a bit. And the Intelligent Network Manager is the, uh, the element I talked about that we have the, uh, you know, the, the Ethernet and, and Wi-Fi in one, we have the, the scheduler having access to all those flows in the buffer to optimally use the uh, So I want to give you an, a peek into what, uh, what, we, what we see happening in the, in the marketplace from a timeline perspective. Um, so the, the IEEE standard has, has defined the technology for 11 x 
the Wi-Fi Alliance is um, preparing a uh, certification program that we expect to uh, to, to happen. Uh, the launch will happen <coughs> in, in August. That's the current plan. Uh, so that means that the product um, will be able to be certified uh, starting in August timeframe uh, with the Wi-Fi six uh, six logo. Um, so. In enterprise, carrier, in retail, uh, where our product is, is used, um, we expect to see the, uh, the certified products uh, to happen after August timeframe. Uh, there are products in the market already since 2018, based on the IPQ 80,000 series. Uh, of course, they are pre Wi-Fi 6, because the actual certification program is not there yet. Um, but, um, but since 2018, uh, the, the product is in the field uh, have quite some experience with the, the technology already. From a uh, from, from a station perspective, from phones and, and computer devices perspective, um, announcements uh, have already been made. Um, so the first pre-certified products are in the market since uh, Q1 2019, so a few months ago. Um, and of course, the, the certified phones, will, uh, phones and tablets and devices will become available uh, after August uh, 10. the power of our access point modify where temperature is set here and uh, we have some problem with air condition uh, for for now i want to make a short uh, summarize in italian for our italian customer regarding this technology all right vi riassumo brevemente la tecnologia wifi 6 che è anche definita eh, 802.11x è la più grande rivoluzione nel mondo del wifi degli ultimi dieci anni perché Mentre, anche se si parla di velocità, l'obiettivo era aumentare la velocità, ora l'obiettivo è fare in modo che tanti dispositivi a sede si connettano permettendo il funzionamento della rete. Perché il mondo è cambiato. Il pomeriggio vi farò vedere qualche slide riguardo a quello che succederà, però siamo passati da un mondo dove in un hotel, ad esempio come questo, c'erano solo 5 anni fa un dispositivo wifi, se andava bene ogni stanza, ogni due, ha invece situazioni in cui c'è un'altissima destra di dispositivi. Il Wi-Fi non è nato per quello, ma lo sta diventando. Il Wi-Fi 6 è una tecnologia su cui io batterò tanto, perché comunque è il futuro, ma perché sta cambiando il mondo. Quindi tanti dispositivi connessi, le reti che devono funzionare e in ogni caso prestazioni in grado di rendere l'esperienza d'uso importante, perché ormai tra applicazioni che vanno su cloud, ma parliamo delle cose più semplici, dal termostato che avete a casa fino al sistema di videosorveglianza, arrivando al centralino telefonico, arrivando alla gestione dei client all'interno di un'azienda, c'è necessità che il wifi sia in grado di gestire tante connessioni simultanee. E questo è un po' l'obiettivo. La presentazione è stata molto tecnica, ma proprio per chi eh, magari ha competenze tali da capire come funziona, però l'obiettivo è questo, cioè se non si fa questo salto, si fa fatica. Oggi vi racconterò anche nel pomeriggio il prossimo case study basato su questa tecnologia eh, che faremo al campionato mondiale di rally in Sardegna, in cui useremo l'811X, perché proprio l'anno scorso abbiamo avuto un problema come saturazione di, dei client. Allora, due cose. Sperando eh, che appunto la temperatura dopo il coffee break ritorni a essere accettabile, e adesso farò una breve eh, presentazione Amanda che racconterà agli altri colleghi non italiani in tutto c'è il coffee break potete visitare i nostri stand in cui vi mostreremo la piattaforma cloud i nuovi access point AX e potete vedere anche il nuovo supporto e poi i nostri partner io vi ringrazio, passo la parola ad Amanda e grazie e scusate per la temperatura ok So in a quick summary of what Simon presented on, AX technology is really bringing stronger connections and really future capabilities for your wireless networking. We really want to thank Qualcomm for their partnership over the years and really giving Ingenius the opportunity to be one of the first to markets with the two by two access point. So we're continuing to lead the industry along with the innovation from Qualcomm. 
We're going to take a quick break for a coffee break, as well as giving you guys an opportunity to experience some of our new ingenious solutions firsthand in the demo room next door. Um, after that coffee break, we'll come back and we'll kick it off with our cloud presentation. Thank you. Thank you. 